inviting us for the knowledge sharing session on structural repair and rehabilitation. We also congratulate Prayojana for hosting such a wonderful program to embrace the technical skill of the fellow engineers, architects, and working pro uh, professionals. As our company introduction is given by my, by my colleague, Mr. Kamal, yesterday, I would like to proceed with the technical session. Before starting the technical session, I would request you all to mute yourself. Any qu queries can be dropped in the chat box for which all our technical team shall address the query. And you, you are also free to ask the question at the end of the session. I welcome you all for the presentation on, on repair and rehabilitation of concrete structures for failure and defects from MYK Ament. The to, uh, today's agenda about the program is that we would talk about the basics of repair and rehabilitation what are the technical insights? We would briefly talk about the EN 1504, which is the principles and the parts of concrete repair technology given by uh, International Concrete Institute USA. We would talk about the repair system, the products and um, uh, the application comp uh, comparison. We would also brief about the structural strengthening with a, with a fiber reinforced plastic or fiber reinforced uh, composite. And we would also talk about the application and use of FRPs and the protective coating system. Now, we are building the structure that are taller and stronger. Our construction chemical ind construction industry has shown a considerable growth from past two decades to meet the infrastructure demands across the country due to the urbanization as well as industrialization and modernization. At the same time, the proposition of a deteriorated concrete structure, which needs repair or also increasing in order to meet the structure, in order to remain the structure functional and fit and during its lifetime, a suitable repair needs to be carried out. So today we talk about the various kinds of repairs for a building. Now we see we have a different kinds of uh, structures that have been built with a different forms and the shape and with a different complexity that has been given in the concrete and in the concrete technology and the by using a various kind of the concrete admixtures and also the various kind of the materials that are used in the construction industry. Now, but the concrete is not forever. Now you see the concrete deteriorates after due course of time. And as I've told, because we have started with the construction of a new building, the old structure needs to be fit, fine and functional for its lifetime of a structure. What are the over period of the, uh, the over the period of time, the concrete structure undergoes various kind of deteriorations. The deterioration such as cracks, the leakage, chemical attack, spalling and corrosion, as well as the deterioration. What is this leaching? If you, if you think about, it is a deterioration of leaching occurs due to the long-term contact with water. It is a result of elution of calcium. That is what is called as leaching. The second problem is what you see is the efflorescence, that is the migration of salts to the surface of the porous material. That is that is an essential process involves dissolving an internally held salt in water and occasionally in one of the or, or any kind of a solvents also. The cracks, as you know, as the tensile strength of a material is greater than the tensile strength capacity of that material the cracks develop that cracks might be a plastic and expansive heaving settling and also the cracks might be due to the overload and next we have is a spalling spalling is nothing but the breakaway of a concrete surface which may often expand to the top surface of a refer of an reinforcing steel sometimes the spalling would be a of more than 150 mm so these are the corrosion effects. When the corrosion effects, what happens when the reinforcement corrodes? Then the the rust that develops, it develops an internal force that within the concrete, and this internal force causes the uh, the delamination of the spalling of a concrete. You can see many of the structures that been corroded, where, uh, that has undergone the various kind of and uh, corrosion effects, and then which requires and and repair repair and rehabilitation 
interventions. Now, the perfect marriage of the two components, the concrete and the steel. Steel, concrete and the steel, we call it as a perfect marriage, or the concrete and the steel, we call it as a union or unity. Why? Because the reinforcement and or the reinforcement and helps the concrete and, uh, in preventing the cracks and improves the structural strength, whereas the concrete protects and the concrete it protects the uh, reinforcement from the corrosion effects as well as the permeability of an uh, of a various kind of uh, of a deterioration products and it also concrete also products uh, protects the reinforcement against the fire exposure so the both of them the both of them um, help each other and then they they help each other to create to protect to strengthen to last long the durability of the of the structure now the concrete is good in compression and the low in tension that is very known fact that concrete is a uh, is a material that is brittle well, and brittle material high in compression and low in tension but the the uh, the better structural properties for the concrete is given by the reinforcement now as we know in the life if there is an entry of the third party and a good family then what happens? Then it always happens as a breakage. So this is what happens in concrete. If other than in a hardened concrete, if there is a water or a waterborne mineral salts or the chemicals or the gases that come in contact, then due to the porosities within the concrete, then there would be always a, a breakage in the life. Now, if you see the background and the scale of challenge, see, 12 billion m cube of concrete is produced annually globally in US around the US based Portland Cement Association gives a figure is that something like 17 million m cube of a concrete is produced in USA since 1930 and 60% of whatever the building which is 10 million m cube uh, of is an in is an uh, uh, cast in place concrete and most of them are greater than 12 years old as per the source of vision 2020 so the total cost of repair rehabilitation and strengthening of a build uh, protection of building that is including waterproofing of a concrete is something like 18 to 21 billion dollars in us in European uh, the countries, the concrete repair market is established uh, is established uh, estimated at uh, one billion euros as per the Hyvel Davis consultant. And they also estimate that eighty percent of the concrete in European nations are uh, produced in Europe had a comparative strength between fifteen to thirty five MPA as per the source of EPI nineteen ninety eight. The cost of the concrete repair has been established as 3% of the total uh, the UK construction output that is uh, uh, through the research establishment uh, from Anthony Waterman uh, and also it also they also estimate that at the annual cost attributed to the corrosion of the reinforcement of concrete structure in the United States is something like 550 pounds in it is not uh, the same in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, they tell that that 110 million Hong Kong dollars are used for the project refurbishment of a single complex of Aberdeen containing 9,147 flats and home for 20,000 people. So this is what is the background and the challenge of the concrete right, repair and rehabilitation market in India. We do not have the right figure, but we have the total uh, the uh, to total requirement of the construction chemicals that is for the concrete repair is something is about more than the 600 crores. Who, who deteriorates the concrete? The concrete deterioration or the structural deficiency arising in the concrete is due to the faulty design of the structure, improper execution and the bad workmanship extreme weathering and environmental condition and high degree of chemical attack and the aging of the structure you, you can see i will talk about each and every uh, points in my further presentations what is the concrete failure and the causes as per british cement association they tell the concrete failure and the causes is the highest is of all is due to the environmental conditions on which the structure or the concrete is in place. 
So it is the more of the total value or the concrete degradation or the failure takes place is because of the environmental conditions. And second is about the pure quality of concrete. Next is a poor selection of material well, that has been used during the concrete. Next is the low cover of an, the, the, of an, any material as IS-45, IS-6 talks about the different kinds of the covers that, that should be upon depending upon the environmental conditions. And then the waterproofing is also the main cause of the concrete failure. And the most important is also the workmanship. So uh, concrete defects and the damages, what are the, the, the degradations of concrete defects and the damages as per the ACI? They, they classify it as in two kinds. One is the concrete degradation that is due to the mechanical, chemical, as well as the physical properties. The first, the, we would talk about concrete degradation. Then we would also talk about the degradation due to the uh, due to the re reinforcement corrosion. First is that the physical properties, the physical properties, chemical properties, and the mechanical property properties. There are the incentric as well as eccentric properties that causes the concrete degradation. The first most important is that the freeze and the top. Then when the uh, when the water turns into ice, its volume increases to nine percent. But the limit of humidity in the concrete are to be not to be so high up. They should it should be below the critical saturation level. So if any any water that are present in the pores of the concrete, when there is in a cold temperature, the water increases the volume to the, till nine percent uh, till the nine percent, and then because of that, it de develops an internal pressure within the concrete, and then you have a spalling or the various degradation in the concrete. Next we have is the thermal. Thermal is the one of the reason, reason the concrete can withstand the temperature, the high temperature up to 650 degrees. Can withstand the temperature till 500 degrees centigrade. So therefore the thicker the concrete, longer it is a time taken for the for the, the high temperature or the heat to reach the reinforcement uh, and that, that is present in the concrete and to reach to the failure, failure temperature of 500 degrees centigrade. Next we have, it is due to the salt crystallization. The shrinkage in the concretes are classified into two kind of a shrinkage. One is a plastic shrinkage. When the plastic shrinkage is caused because when the it is in a plastic stage of the, uh, the concrete, then we have got an hardened shrinkage or uh, technically which is called as hygrometric shrinkage. That, uh, that takes place uh, when there is a transition of the concrete from the wet to the hardened stage. The next we talk about the erosion as well as the uh, the uh, the wear as well as the erosion in a car erosion is particularly a form of an and wear due to wind water or ice which proves which proves uh, provokes the removal of the material from the surface so the it also depends upon the speed the content of the materials that have been used depending upon the quality of the concrete more emphasis to be taken and during the concrete production the next kind of erosion we call it as a cavitation it is a problem when the uh, when the flowing water is greater than 12 meters per second minutes per second is present the high speed of water together with an irregular uh, surface when the water flow provokes the turbulence within the within the area of low pressure and vortexes and it forms uh, the forms in the form of that the abrasion of the substrate takes place so these are the different physical properties next we have is the chemical properties which i'll talk about separately on the alkali aggregate reactions then the sulfate attack then the biological activities the next is the the why the degradation takes place on the mechanical properties which is called as a mechanics uh, of the structure it is due to the the various reasons such as the impact what is this impact is about impact is nothing but the when when an, any an hard material is rubbed on the fragile material, then the impact takes place. 
or the overload movement is also one of the reason the explosion or the vibrations it is also a mechanical uh, concrete degradation process that is due to the explosion you know the vibration is might be the seismic effect then the degradation of the concrete reinforcement is classified into three kinds one is carbonation chloride attack and stray attack what is rust the rust is nothing but when an iron reacts with water in presence of as an uh, the oxygen it forms a rust why rust is so important is that when the steel corrodes it iron turns into iron oxides or rust rust takes up the four times the volume of the steel this puts a pressure within the concrete and cause the cracking and the spalling of the of the concrete and finally the degradation or deterioration of the structure the visible signs of defect due to the attack is nothing but cracking leaching spalling scaling stains disintegration wear and and efflorescence corrosion of reinforcing steels and and the mildew and algae what are the atmospheric effects that is, uh, causes the corrosion is that the constituents of corrosions are chloride carbonation sulfates and alkali silica reaction then first we uh, we would understand what is a chloride attack chloride ions from the salt they break down the protective layer which is called as a passivation layer on the steel steel then that is the, that and when this passivation layer breaks the, the chloride attack the reinforcement and causes the pitting corrosion carbonation it is caused through the atmospheric carbon dioxide and the acid gases that permeates through the pores and reacts with the alkalinity and the sulfates are caused due to the reaction of sulfates with cement and the secondary aggregate formation takes place next is a silica alkali silica reaction this is caused due to the siliceous aggregate and the cement reaction and let us understand the durability of a corrosion process the first most uh, uh, the, uh, the effects would be the poor quality control poor structural design poor workmanship and the environment so the low strength is the another issue in the quality control and high permeability due to the high water cement ratio we need to be very clear about the water cement ratio and the concrete too stiff to flow around the congested reinforcement freeze and thaw is also an any uh, the reason for the poor, poor quality concrete and also the uh, the degradation and asr that is alkali silica reaction due to due to the reactive aggregates poor structural design that is insufficient depth of the concrete cover it is very very important is 456 talks about the different kinds of the concrete cover depending upon the the exposure conditions the cracking due to the thermal cycle movement cracking due to the due to the repeated but not excessive mechanical loading is also a main reason for the degradation of the concrete or the corrosion of the reinforcement and also that also uh, in turns reflects on the durability of the concrete now the poor workmanship that is the honeycombing or due to the insufficient compaction and in the poor workmanship it is also and the material poor workmanship also includes negligence in control and with the supervision the most important is the environment reinforcement corrosion in the tidal zone on the 25 year old jetty takes place because of the environment and widespread of corrosion takes place where rebar corrosion in many years because of the deoxidizing salt usage freeze and thaw fire damage due to the vehicle collusion in certain kind of and tunnels and acidic attack now a famous author the pk mehta tells the durability issue in a concrete ion does not fly but they swim so the fuel of corrosion is oxygen and water therefore as we have told it is a freeze and thaw cycles that the water or when it is in a cold condition the volume increases by 9% so it also directly depends upon the quality of the concrete it depends upon the water cement ratio it depends on the porosity the permeability degree of compaction and the water tightness in a marine environment the cover crete which is a concrete cover should be greater than 50 mm
and the second the fuel of corrosion is carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is present in the atmosphere at the rate of 0.35 percent in a carbon dioxide what uh, the attack what happened is that carbonation process is that the uh, the carbon dioxide right, uh, enters in, uh, into the concrete through the pore water and this carbon dioxide they, they react to form the carbonic acid and this carbonic acid or carbon dioxide reacts with calcium hydroxide to further to form and calcium carbonate and the most important thing in carbonation process is that at any new concrete the ph would be at 12.5 uh, to 13 but during the carbonization process as the ph of the concrete it gets lesser than 8 to 9 so that is very 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 it is very very uh, and fearsome because the steel starts corroding in presence of water and the, uh, the oxygen and carbonation is more active between the rh that is the humidity of something like a 25 to 85 percent of relative humidity next is the chloride attack the the negative chloride ions breaks to the passivating uh, layer and uh, the con when the concentration is greater than 3.5 percent the the weight of the cement it creates a microcell and uh, this microcell it creates and pitting corrosion and this process is an independent of ph next is the sulfate attack the sulfate attack where calcium hydroxide reacts with sulfates to find form and 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 secondary aggregate and this secondary aggregates it uh, forms and the an expensive force and destroys the concrete matrix and most important thing is that the concrete workmanship is very very important is that we need to use a very good concrete that has to be a fluid enough and as well as the, uh, the there should be no segregation or honeycombing in the concrete pour and any concrete should be of a lower water cement ratio now as we have already discussed the reaction of the in a carbonation what happens the carbon reacts with calcium hydroxide to form and a calcium carbonate or the uh, uh, mild acids and this is uh, what happens in this uh, carbonation effect is that at uh, the results of the carbonation is that at it reduces the ph within the concrete and then in the test method is that examination of a broken concrete taken from um, uh, an existing building and spraying of an alcoholic phenolphthalein solutions area with with the ph take a pink color and carbonated areas stay unchanged this is what is a test that has been done for the, to check the carbonation in the concrete you can see this is a reinforcement steel and how the carbon dioxide enters and then and then it is it causes the degradation or the defects that is in the concrete now the carbonation induced corrosion as i've told the carbonation induced corrosions will be much more active when the when when the relative humidity humidity is something about 40 to uh, the, at the 40 percent to 100 percent range now this is about the chloride uh, induced corrosion which i have already talked about that is a passive layer will be dissolved with the sufficient chlorides are available and it causes a pitting corrosion you can see this is a pitting corrosion that is nothing but why this pitting corrosion is very very and uh, severe is that the corrosion takes place at a particular uh, areas where the anode has been created and at that areas you you can see the reinforcement the uh, the size would have produced and this also ca ca causes the uh, the reduction in the load bearing capability now surface uh, sulfate attack in the sulfates are the sources of sulfates are the organic matter marshes shallow lakes and swamps and even in the chemical process and waste process as well as in the seawater like we have in is456 depending upon the environmental conditions we we have different kinds of a cement as well as the water cement ratio that has to be taken care in the in the same way in the sulfate uh, content uh, wherever the areas where the sulfate content are present in the soil or the water we have different levels that might be a negligible moderate severe and and very severe uh, areas alkali uh, silica reaction in an alkali alkali silica re uh, reaction it has a relevance and uh, the, does this have 
when choosing the concrete repair materials? Yes, because most of the specification of a low alkali content repair materials are given because of the uh, where the content should be less than 3 kg of equivalent of Ne2O in an in an pre-placed aggregate repairs or when an extended uh, repair materials that deep suction take care that only the non-reactive aggregates should be uh, used to avoid the chemical incompatibility with the concrete susceptible to alkali aggregate reaction. This is what happens in alkali aggregate reaction and if it is a core is taken from a deteriorated structure when you spray the sodium cobalt nitrate the areas that would turns, you can see the yellow color uh, whenever the concrete, uh, the samples turn into yellow, that indicates that at the concrete is under attack of an alkali silica reaction has been taken place. So other investigation techniques, what we have, we have a non-destructive testing systems and destructive testing systems. And, uh, and some of them, um, you can see on the basis of the concrete matrix, we have physical, chemical and mechanical properties and, uh, and each and every testing systems for physicals and chemical and mechanical as well as the electrochemical uh, properties. So these are the testing systems that have been used to find or to assess the condition of a distressed RS uh, of an RCC or the PSC structures. Now, in the life structure of an uh, of an concrete, you can see the concrete would be in a good conditions. Now, you can see the original concretes have been designed for life beyond the original design. But what happens and when there is a the minor symptoms or there would be a, the symptoms that would generate that would affect the performance degradation that in the uh, in the concrete as well as the durability as well as, well as the life cycle of the structure. Now there was a famous author called as an uh, the uh, WRD Shutter. He gives the law of phi estimates that when the maintenance is neglected, the repair becomes essential, which generally equals five times the maintenance cost. If the repairs are not made, the rehabilitation becomes becomes the five times the repair cost. That what does it tells? If you spend one dollar for only monitoring. Then you need to spend, if you neglect the monitoring process, then you need to spend and add uh, $5 for the preventive maintenance before corrosion as, as initiate, initiation has taken place. If you neglect the both, the, uh, the even when the preventive maintenance is not done, when the corrosion is, the initiation has to be taken, uh, has been taken up, then you need to spend 5 into 5, that is $25. And again, again and again, if you neglect it, you need to spend more than $125 dollars to be spent on repair and the, uh, the re replacement after the generalized corrosion. This is what he tells. That means you need to be, be, be attentive as well as you need to be um, always monitoring monitoring the, the, the various life of an, any of the structure to prevent uh, the, to, uh, to increase the durability and to the lifespan of the structure. Now there was a uh, the survey done by ICRI, which is called as an contraplet survey. In this survey, they found that. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. In that survey, they found that 25% of the concrete owners were unhappy with the performance of the repair and the rehabilitation within five years, and 75% were dissatisfied within 10 years. What was it? What was the reason? 75% is a big value. Why were the, uh, the people were, uh, were unhappy in the repair performance? This is what I said, I talked about the ContraPnet survey that took place in November 2004. What they found out? They found out that most of the, the, uh, the repair modes of failures were cracking. And this cracking was due to the, uh, the inappropriate specification and the choose of materials. That was the main pro main issues. Why the most of the owners were unhappy of using uh, uh, or after uh, repair and rehabilitation and uh, intervention. So they came out with a document called EN one five zero four, which has got an some the ten parts as well as the eleven principles. They talked about the terms and definition of standards. They also talked about the uh, the performance of the surface of the products. 
then they talked about the structural and non repair uh, structural repair motors to be used they they also uh, gave a special performance specification for product systems for structural bonding they also gave uh, they jolted down the various performance specification for it. And what are the systems to be? They also gave uh, in an EN1504 talks about the performance specification for products and systems for anchoring of reinforcement steel bars and even for the, the corrosion and the, the product systems for the reinforcement corrosion protections. They also talked about the quality control certifications of conformity for manufacture of products. They also talked about the various uh, general principles for the use of products for the repair and rehabilitation they also gave hey, the various documents and scopes for the site application and quality control of works so there are different principles that have been given as per en 1504 there are the the 11 principles that is from principle 1 to 6 is associated with the repair and the protecting of the concrete matrix the principle 7 to 11 is associated with the direct protecting of an reinforcement steel which one i will not go in brief about that en 1504 then there are different the, the, the definitions given by en 1504 they talk about cosmetic or protective repair so what are this cosmetic or protective repair these are repair system does not act composite way with the structure. They are only used to restore the alkalinity around the reinforcement steel uh, or the appearance of the structure. What is the durability? The ability of the structure or its main component to maintain in serviceability in the given temperature or fairing or the, the, the leveling coat. It is nothing a special ultra fine mortar for filling ducts and blow holes and minor irregularities can be a feather edged material also the functional repair motor that improves the abrasion or the chemical resistance of the concrete or to restore the water tightness micro concrete or the extended motor or repair motor with a minimum aggregate size of 8 to 12 mm either pre-packed or extended on job sites motors are the mixture of cement paste or the binder and fines and what are the non-structural repair motor that has a repair that addresses only the local deter deterioration and it is not identified to affect the uh, the structural uh, capacity of the member then we have a structural repair motors that has been that uh, the repair motor that enhances the structural capacity uh, capability of the member the traffic level repair motor this is the internal can uh, the classification of myk that is for the uh, that is associated with road or the traffic surface repairs now it is very important that we need to know what kind of a repair motors or what is it what kind of a system we need to use for the repair or of an various kind of a structure or the structural member the surface with the structural repair motor you can you can understand here if a structural remains in the compact the concrete is acceptable then you can use a structural repair the, the surface repair motor because it is it does not carry any load but only it increases the appearance as well as the uh, it gives the better alkalinity to the concrete if the remaining cross section is overstressed then you need to use a structural motor the, the, that is the surface repairs are required to carry the portion of the structural loads in a structural repair motor it carries the portion of the structural load then en 1504 standards that is repair for the motor specification they talks about the various kind of a structural as well as the non-structural repair motors wherever the structural repair motors are classified into where compressive strength is uh, is greater than 25 mpa to uh, to uh, as well as the 45 mpa we call it as class 4 structural repair motor now if you see any kind of a repair motor specification as per en 1504 you need to see this is what class the material is being classified during when you find that it is a class 1 or class 2 you need to understand it is a non structural repair motor if a repair motor classes are from class 4 to class class 3 to class 4 then you need to understand that is an structural repair motor not only the compressive strength they talks about adhesion bond strength they also talks about the modulus of elasticity we also will talk why modulus of elasticity is very important then coefficient of thermal expansion also are the determining factors to understand the structural and the the non-structural repair motor 
Now, the systematic approach starts with the conditional survey. That is that first is that you, 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 you would see the visual effects, the defects or the damage of deterioration, the reason. Then you need to have a conditional survey. You need to evaluate the cost. You need to quantify as well as qualify, document it. Then you need to go for a repair strategy. Is it that that the building is safe or does it have a structural the catastrophe or it is due to the loss of functionality or a leakage or is it due to the effects of environment ethic or do we go for a preventive maintenance? Then we need to go for an, and we need to jolt out our repair objectives. In the repair objectives, we need to, uh, as an engineers, we need to give the owner's objectives is it urgent? What is the cost? The loss of use, the expectation, the service life, then ethic and sustain the sustainability. And that is what is the engineering objectives. As a civil engineers, we need to find out the structural requirement, durability, constructability, and environmental protection and safety. Then you need to have a repair strategy that is methods, material, and the placement conditions. So the, what are the repair definitions? What are defects? Defects are the unacceptable conditions that which may be built or may be result for the deterioration or the damage. Protection is a measure which prevents, reduces the development of defects. Repair is a measure with the corrective, corrects defect. Uh, the defects, so we have different kinds of repair system which I have already spoken about. Cosmetic or protective, structural, traffical as well as the, the functional repair systems. Now, the constructability or flowability of a system depends upon what are the main uh, methods of repair is nothing but travel or hand applied form and pour or form and pump application pneumatically sprayed repair mortar that is short cleat or ganiting and the, the pre-placed aggregate uh, form and pump application but the choice of method depends upon the size and the depth of a repair areas access of a repair site and the amount of nature of the reinforcement, the performance of the repair depends upon the bond that the repair is able to achieve with the substrate and degree of consolidation and the protection uh, the, the repair material provides with the, with the reinforcing steel. Now this is what is and and hand applied or travel applied repair motor. These repair motors are are used to uh, to increase the functionality. That is the to uh, to give a better functional appearance and to protect the reinforcement uh, uh, steel and this can be used for the very smaller areas so this is we have a different kinds of and this is, you can see the picture hand applied repair motor so we have a different products which is uh, uh, that has got as a classification as i've told as per bsen 1504 part 3 the r4 classification indicates that at uh, the compressive strength of a repair motor is greater than 45 mpa and the uh, the modulus is is greater than and the 20 gpa then we have an epoxy based repair motors but we do not use an epoxy based repair motor because of its exothermic properties and also the epoxy based repair motor as are also uh, are only used for the small repair areas we have form and pour kind of a repair motors that is uh, the, the repairing system that is micro concrete which, <coughs> which you can pour or um, uh, pour as well as you can also pump this as uh, some of our repair motor for uh, for and repair and rehabilitation and uh, uh, process and in, in this uh, form and for repair motor when you pour a repair motor it covers each and every ends of the reinforcement and the protects the reinforcement from any corrosion effects so we have the different kinds of mi micro concrete the micro concrete what we have you can add even aggregates which is more than 55 percent and some of the repair motors can of ours can be pumped I, I will not take uh, more about the materials which has got a high compressive strength which can be sprayed even for the horizontal as well as the overhead applications and this is a pre-packed repair motors where the lock wall uh, refacing of a joint first they were what they would do therefore the dock repairing and all first they add aggregates then they pump grout into the system and this is what is the direct uh, the uh, the prepack aggregate uh, repair motor usage systems what you can see in a repair motors are also classified into site mixed 
patched repair motors because most of the time you see when the when there is any repair one of the person comes with an liquid and then add it into the cement and do that is a site mixed repair motor it it is a patch repairs that might be very low cost they might be using and polymers it has got a high shrinkage poor or inconsistent performance we have a pre back repair motors that is from the factory controlled which has got an uh, uh, and reduced uh, uh, the good compatibility with the concrete and it, which is an, uh, an economical as well as the, uh, the relative low cost we have a polymer reactive kind of a repair motor that is nothing but an epoxy polyester or uh, methacrylate methacrylates are used for the uh, for, for the faster repair works and with a thermal incompatibility and it is used for the small repair Okay, then in some kind of a repair motors, what you see is a magnesium phosphate based of a repair motor that is ultra fast setting, low shrinkage, poor bond on the carbonated concrete, very short work or open times. And these magnesium phosphate based repair motors are used at the areas where the temperatures are very, very low. For example, in the blast furnace, if you want to do any repair where the temperature is low. At that area, you, you cannot use a cement-based or repair motor or an epoxy-based repair motor. So what are the selection of, of repair motor? You can see all the structural members. You need to use a structural repair motor. And a non-structural members, you can use a non-structural repair motor. And for, for the areas such as your car parking or at the areas where you have a trafficable track, then you need to use a trafficable repair motor. So the material properties, what you need to find, where the, what you need to see in a repair motor is classified or divided into five categories, which is constructability applications, mechanical and physical properties. Next is the bond strength, the durability, and the dimensional behavior. Constructability talks about how flowability or the thixotropic the material is and how fast it can gain strength, what is its performing performance, working time, and, tem and temperature sensitivity, and repair geometry. Mechanical properties, because it talks about your mechanics. Yes, that is me, sir. But, yes. Yeah, I think uh, last few slides, sir, it was a little bit fast, seems to be uh, audience has messaged. Eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in between, can you have a small break and ask questions so that you can answer the queries in the which is mentioned in the message box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh? Please uh, go through the message box. Few queries are there. Uh, if you want, I can uh, read about the queries. Uh, then we can proceed. Other okay, if you team. want... Uh, uh, the coverage, if it is not covering in one particular session, we can have one more session in other day also, not an issue. And yeah. uh, there was a few questions where there, how to, this is from Prayas Jain, how to treat a leakage problem in old roofs of 25 to 30 years of RCC, he is asking. Um, Prayas Jain, tomorrow I am talking about the waterproofing only, where we have uh, the, uh, the lot of intervention of the leakage problems. First, we need to find out the intensity of the leakage and what is the cause of the leakage. And depending upon the cause of the leakage only, then we can suggest the different kinds of uh, the repair, uh, the repair uh, or the rehabilitation process. What we can carry down, carry out. Okay. Anyway, tomorrow session is there on waterproofing. You can attend. So the leakage issues you can address over there. And uh, Nikhil Vadwani has uh, mentioned what happens when pH reduces due to CO2. When a pH reduces with, uh, uh, due to the carbon dioxide, as I've already uh, uh, informed you, the, the, uh, the, the most of this carbon dioxide, they react with calcium uh, hydroxide and uh, forms the calcium carbonate. And when the pH gets reduced, the passivation layer above the, uh, on the reinforcement also comes down so where pH would be in, the initial pH of a new concrete is something like 12 to 13. When there is a carbonation attack, the pH would come to um, to 8.5 to 9. Therefore, your deterioration or a corrosion process takes place. And uh, there is uh, one more question. When pH decreases, steel corrosion occurs, thereby concrete fails, right? This is from Raju. For he is yes. PES College, a 2018 uh, batch passed out. Yes, yes, yes. You are 100% right, Mr. And, Raju. Uh, next question is uh, from 
సార్ ఎనీ మెథడ్స్ టు కంట్రోల్ క్రాక్స్ ఆఫ్టర్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ సందీప్ see there are uh, they, uh, first we need to find out the what is the reason for why first we should have a visual inspection then the proper survey for the reason of uh, the reason of the crack development is it because of due to the overload or is it due to the plastic or due to the expansion or due to the heaving or due to the settling so depending upon the kind of an proper uh, conditional survey then we can uh, discuss on the systems and the products that where can where which can be in- incorporated to reduce the cracks yes sir yes sir and you can proceed with the presentation if any other questions comes we'll ke- take up the end okay yes thank you thank you yeah so the material properties can be divided into five categories that is the dimensional behavior we would talk about this what is drying shrinkage coefficient of thermal expansion modulus of elasticity the creep shrinkage and the cracking tendency so we would talk about all uh, the, the most important properties is the dimensional stability why because the dimensional stability plays a very important role in and selection of and compact selection as well as the compactability of and the repair materials so modulus of elasticity as we know the modulus of elasticity it is used to measure the stiffness or ability to resist the deformation which is often called as young's modulus or e modulus so the measures that amount of deformation or the strain to be given apply stress now for example if you have a concrete of high modulus with a low modulus repair mortar that is if a concrete is of high modulus if you use a non structural repair mortar then what happens when the difference is large the first what happens first with an and the low modulus repair mortar first it fails in shear stresses occurs on the bond line load is concentrated on the concrete and repair mortar deforms therefore incomplete incompatibility in modulus means repair mortar is <coughs> not unable to contribute for the structural repair this is what happens when you use an low modulus repair mortar or the low strength kind of a repair mortar or in an and repair <coughs> prevention second kind of a situations what happens when you have a low modulus concrete and you have an high modulus repair mortar now even you have an high modulus repair mortar most the the shear stresses occur in the bond line and the load is concentrated on the repair mortar but your concrete deforms because it cannot take so much of load and the repair mortar has very high modulus load may cause a brittle failure higher the modulus lower the deformation under the load very high modulus material fails suddenly at very high loads and can be considered in structural repairs the modulus of elasticity of the of the repair material should be similar to that of the concrete this is the point that has to be noted necessary to achieve the uniform load transfer dissimilar modulus of elasticity between the substrate and the repair material can <coughs> result in overstressing of one or the other now the coefficient of thermal expansion we know the the coefficient of thermal expansion of concrete is something like like 12.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6 why is this coefficient of thermal expansion is very important as per the standard of icri that crd c39 and astm c531 as well as the astm d696 if a two material with a different coefficient of thermal thermal expansion they move in two different ways and because of that that leads to stress at the bond line and the debonding and the cracking takes place therefore that is very important that you should have the coefficient of thermal expansion of the two materials to be same for example the coefficient of thermal expansion of an epoxy based repair mortar is is something like 55 into 10 to the power of minus 6 and the concrete is 8 to 13 into 10 to the power of minus 6 therefore there would be always is an difference in coefficient of thermal expansion that causes the failure therefore it is very very important is that 
we need to use a uh, materials with that of the the coefficient of thermal expansion of the two materials to be same the creep is also closely related to the modulus lower the lower the modulus would be a higher creep higher the modulus will be the lower creep what is creep creep is nothing but the deformation of the material under the constant load that can be measured in tension or in compression that can be a good thing in relaxing stress caused by restraint shrinkages you can see this is what is a creep test what we do during the for an repair motor now this is the measurement of shrinkage you know the shrinkage in a concrete takes place due to the in the plastic has plus the hardened stage so shrinkage of the portland uh, based repair motor r can be measured by modified version of astm c157 that is length change of the hardened hydraulic cement mortar as well as the concrete where we check that there is is there any change in the length or the volume once the repair mortar is been used so why it is very important that we need to use uh, a different kinds of a repair mortar with the balanced uh, properties it is for the best result what happens increase the cement if i increase the cement then or if i decrease the cement or if i in reduce the water or the creep then it has got an undesirable effect but when i reduce the shrinkage then what happens the cracking tendency decreases the durability increases and the customer satisfaction also increases therefore there should be a uniform balance between the the, the various properties that might be a tensile strength the modulus of elasticity the shrinkage stresses as well as the creep so these are the repair material built up depending upon the repair first it is the preparation of the repair area and then the reinforcement cleaning and protection application of bonding agent application of repair mortar application of fairing coat or protective coating now you need to chip away the loose materials you have to break behind the uh, behind the steel for the depth of 25 mm square cut the edge and the patch and the depth at least 10 mm this is what is the different intervention or the removing of a defective concrete you can see the breaking or the the blasting or the hydroplasting kind of a system and in the repair geometry also plays very important role you need to mark a perimeter and the layout should be simple geometry that should be in the square or in the rectangular shape therefore the concrete repair geometry as per the webinar uh, of an aci webinar 2013 you can see what should be the geometry now the reinforcement preparation you need to remove the dust and then you need to uh, uh, clean the reinforcement you can use the rust remover or the rust converter once the rust have been removed you need to apply a zinc rich epoxy primer so zinc rich epoxy primer uh, helps in compacting in the corrosion effects that is within the uh, the uh, the reinforcement reduces in forming an in incipient anode so this is the breakage out of the damaged structure once you break down the damaged structure if the size of the reinforcement has been reduced you need to add the additional reinforcement and then you need to apply a and zinc rich primer you can see in this picture the additional reinforcement and so have been uh, replaced after damage reinforcement has been taken place and they have added the additional reinforcement we have a zinc rich primer that helps in and uh, the protection of the reinforcement then once the, the the reinforcement is protected then you need to use a water as a saturation you need to use a bonding agent and uh, the it might be an polymer based bonding agent or the epoxy based bonding agent the polymer based bonding agents are much more better uh, in case of an the uh, the repair of a small area if there is a higher bonding capability you required you can use an epoxy bonding agent that is at an chloride contaminated areas you need to use an epoxy bonding agent this is a comparison of the bond strength of the various emulsion what happens is that the most of our uh, uh, the repair uh, the applicators they use a neat uh, bonding agents no you need to mix a bonding agent with a cement slurry so that it gives you a better better bond strength properties you can see here where an acrylic with the cement slurry gives a better uh, uh, the mechanical uh, properties as such 
so the, these are the applications of the repair motor the repair motors can be in hand or the travel applied which can be form and pour the most of the repair motors also can be sprayed depending upon the area as well as the depending upon the uh, the intervention technology or the systems have been used so this is the repair techniques you can see you are the person pouring uh, the grout or the micro concrete and at certain places you can also uh, you can also even spray the uh, the repair motor so this is what is an anchoring with the shear connectors and then you can even pump the structural grade head repair motor at that locations hence where the repair intervention or rehabilitation is required and this is what is the application methods even using um, equipment you can even uh, spray this repair motors you can see how the repair motors can be sprayed by continuous feed rendering machines or by the pistons or warm screw rendering, uh, rendering machine if you have a large repairs to be done then you can even spray even for the horizontal lines as well as the overhead application it will not sag uh, like an any other kind of an repair motor this is a travel applied or a sponge finished refiling motor refiling motor is nothing but a finishing motor that is used to finish from the surface now the product selections of a repair motor repair product depends upon the location of patch the mechanical or chemical exposures the other exposures impact load vibration and the size of the patch or the depth of the patch age and quality of the existing concrete color requirement requires strength development and cross section of the structure in a repair cement repair motors it is very stable with the substrate that is an advantage but the uh, and then it can be easily be molded it can be sprayed it is easy a uh, one part pack able to repair the large uh, areas what are the disadvantage it has the flexural strength is very low and then the, the the lower tensile strength unsuitable for crack repair tendency of crack and shrinkage this is all about the cement repair cement based repair motor but in a resin based repair motor we can overcome um, the the, uh, the disadvantage of a cement based repair motor but in a resin based repair motor it is not compatible with all kind of a substrate it is difficult to spray you cannot do a large repairs because of its exothermic properties what are these exothermic properties when the resin or the, the resin or let it be the base or the hardener or the filler or the mix it generates heat when uh, in an epoxy based repair motor the heat generated is known as exothermic uh, reaction in a cement based uh, the system when the water mixed with cement it generates a heat that is called as hydration this is all about the zinc rich repair motor it acts active zinc combats the corrosion of electrochemical process and this is the anatomy of the repair in the anatomy of a repair if there is any cracks or deteriorated surface you need to chip it off and then you need to expose the reinforcement once the reinforcement is exposed you need to remove the rust out by the various surface preparation for the steel and then you need to apply and zinc rich primer or a cementitious based repair material and then you need to uh, fill it up with uh, with a repair system this is the complete process of and repair as we have discussed removal of damaged structure rust removal of the rebars corrosion protection bonding bridge and then application of repair motor rendering materials and concrete protection after the uh, the repair intervention for the protection we have an epoxy or pu injection systems which can be used which is a low viscous epoxy systems for injection of cracks that is the and then we have an and pu injection for harvesting of leakage in tunnels or concrete walls this is all about the repair um, motors then we then we would talk about the frp strengthening systems now the strengthening of concrete structure with the fiber reinforced polymers so i would go ahead with this so the reason for a strengthening of an existing structure what is the reason why an existing structure to be strengthened it is divided into four parts one is to increase the load bearing capability when there is a change in use when there is a new loading conditions design or construction errors what is this change in use for example if it is if i am converting a commercial place into a laboratory then the load bearing capability to be increased 
and that you can also uh, that also goes for the need for the strengthening of an existing structure then replace the capability capacity lost of damage due to the corrosion impact and due to the fire or the natural disaster in any building is undergone because of the the deterioration has taken place because of fire or the natural disaster that requires a strengthening then increase in the seismic performance of the structure now this is a very important criteria and important requirement in any structural design that any concrete structure to increase the seismic performance of the structure as well as the blast resistance is also is very very important and that requires the strengthening of an existing structure what are the conventional stress as uh, the strengthening method the strengthening techniques includes the structure uh, the enlargement or the shear punching collars external post tensioning stirrups or the enlarged shear these are the various technique uh, systems that have been used and these are the conventional method of rehabilitations now why is this frp system frp is a low profile repair it is can easily concealed concealed with the varieties of top coats minimum equipment does not add any appreciable load to the structure that is what is very important in the repair for example if this column if i use for a uh, use and way i have to increase the volume and also it out covers the larger space and the area where i cannot use it but if i when i use an frp system that can be an uh, in install thickness would be less than 1 by 16 the inch what is this frp system frps are the composites that has been and covered with an and and fibers as and the epoxy based composite systems this epoxy this fiber the carbon fibers where the diameter is lesser than the diameter of an human hair that is what is an frp based system the frp composites based system so we have polymers as well as the frp fibers we call it as an fiber reinforced polymers they have very tense high tensile strength that is typically 5 to 10 times stronger than steel and they are very lightweight that is about 1 by 8 the weight of a steel they do not corrode now you see they are used in building of aircraft structures ship hulls and automotive parts and and sporting goods and they are also used in the structural strengthening in, uh, of an uh, structural members now the fiber reinforced polymers are the polymers are the thermosetting resins these resins might be epoxies vinyl or polyester these epoxies are being as most common in constructions we cannot use uh, polyesters or or vinyl because of their their difference in coefficient of double expansion as well as they they set very fast and the polymer bonds fiber together there is a what is the polymer we are using here we are using an epoxy as a polymer that allow the stress to be distributed among the fibers and then it also protects the fibers from wear and abrasion protects the fibers from environmental conditions so these are the frp <coughs> systems what we have we have carbon <coughs> fiber we have glass fibers and we have aramide fibers what are the frp stress strain relationship uh, it talks about you can see the carbon fibers has got a better better stiffness as well as the glass fiber has got the ductility and the uh, the, the steel has got an and the lower uh, elastic region this is what is talking about that means the uh, the frp systems has got high tensile strength and modular elasticity that can undertake ultimate uh, capacity as well as the design capability so the fiber reinforced frp polymers what we have we have a primer we have an epoxy paste we have a saturants for the wet layer as well as the dry layer and these are the about the saturants which i will not talk about the products or systems these are used for uh, tested as per en standard en 1504 part 4 and this is what is a system first you need to go for a for a primer and a putty for a leveling surface frp fabric and a saturant of epoxy and then you can cover up with that with a top coat 
now principle of application it is for the confinement of an actual load you can see the difference between the confined concrete as well as the unconfined concrete the stress and the, the longitudinal strain diagram what you can see in a confined as well as the in the unconfined uh, the concrete elements now this is what happens what does it affects with the reinforced column this is a column when the load falls in that then you have a plastic hinge region due to the poison uh, the poison effect the concrete is transferly exp uh, expanded when compressed this expansion leads to the collapse of the column as the concrete has limited capacity for elongation so hence if a transferred expansion is restricted then the, there would be a final strength increase that's what it talks about this is what the various kinds of tests that has been done you can see in this actual stress or the strain diagram you can see the uh, the thickness of a wrapped system and how it increases the strength bearing capability as the wrap thickness increases the load carrying capability also increases this is the frp confinement systems where the confinement for the circular as well as the the rectangular columns you can see the how the frp systems have been confined for the two for the actual load bearing capability to increase the actual load bearing capability what is the fractional strengthening systems in the fractional strengthening systems we use and FRP laminates based systems, and these FRP laminates based systems hence would give a better fluctual strengthening properties. Now, for example, we have a slab which might be a two way or a one way slab, which might be a supported or the support with a supported edge a kind of a slab. We have two way edge supported slab, two way flat slab, and two way um, uh, flat slab kind of a system. And in this kind, what happens? There would be a movement or the the load developed at the single portion. Therefore, we have one way concrete slab strengthening with an FRP strengthening systems. And and how we can strengthen one way bridge slab reinforced with carbon uh, fibric systems we can see which was done in 1980s in japan this is what was the strengthening system that has been done even uh, in japan in 1980s it's a two-way concrete slab uh, strengthening systems with an frp strips that are be that are be laid on the slab to resist all the fluctual movements then the shear strengthening in the shear strengthening, you, you require most of the shear uh, uh, forces act on the junction between the beams and columns. Therefore, you need to strengthen that areas. So you can use an FRP uh, systems or might be a carbon uh, uh, fiber systems for strengthening of a shear. Now, in the action of a simple supported beam. Then when the load falls, there is a two, uh, three kind of an action that place, takes place. That is a positive movement region takes place shear region takes place a negative movement region takes place in a positive region movement the bending force are called as movements or fluctural cause in a shear it does the shearing force near the supports causes tension diagonally along the side of the beam this is also sometimes called as diagonal tension in a negative moment uh, region the tension on the top side of the beam and the compression on the bottom of the beam also takes place that crosses as the cracks as well as the failure. In an FRP uh, systems or the laminate kind of an system, FRP laminates only work on under tension. They cannot be used for the uh, for the actual uh, kind of an areas, but it is necessary to determine the portion of tensile stress along the elements. Therefore, the FRP laminates are, are displayed longitudinally along the concrete surface. Now you can see the, the amplification the, the reinforcement plus, plus and and uh, the the laminates it is equal to uh, having an higher number of the higher number of the uh, the reinforcement there and even as a stirrups in the stirrups also when you use a, an frp based system so the the it is equivalent to you have a higher number of stirrups in the in the beam and this is what is a traditional reinforcement example of a shear strengthening stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. This is the enlargement, steel bonding, and external uh, post tensioning systems. Now we have it is an enlargement, additional adding additional reinforcement to the steel and the concrete of a pre packed 
repair motors will be used external post tensioning installing post tensioning cables on the outside of a structural member using hydraulic jacks or to stress the cables then the steel bonding epoxy bonding and some sometimes mechanically anchoring steel plates to the outside of the structural member to act as a new reinforcement so this is a, uh, the, the systems that are used in for the shear it is a positive movement region you can use the laminates for the shear strengthening you can use a strip of an frp based system so this is what happens in the concrete or the machinery Masonry strengthening also and allows the wall to uh, to resist. What are the, uh, the FRP system allows the FRP wall to uh, the walls to resist higher out of the plane bending loads due to wind, soil pressure, fluid pressure, seismic or blast loads. For example, a machinery shear wall. An example, a machinery shear walls that requires an additional 10 kilonewtons of an in player shear strength. Additional, the traditional option what do you what do you use you use a reinforcement plus a short crate that that you use at a, the 10 mm bars at a 500 mm vertical and horizontal spacing and 100 mm of short crate you think of how much of load you are adding but one ply of carbon fiber of 250 mm wide are spaced at 500 mm run horizontally and vertically it gives you a, an load additional load of something like more than 10 kilo newtons it is the advantage this is the shear uh, strengthening process yeah first you need to clean the surface apply the primer and then you need to use a saturant uh, on that and then you to you need to lay, lay the uh, the uh, the carbon fibers and this is what is the laminate you can see the uh, the fibers that travels in the one uh, directions and it is lightweight non corrosive based system you can strengthen the uh, these uh, the slab from any flexural moment using an laminate kind of a system this is a system selector for the application wise guys uh, for the uh, beam uh, i i can hear a lot of noise please uh, please mute yourself so the application. I have done. Somebody newly joined. Uh, I, uh, he is not in mute mode. I just uh, pushed yeah, him yeah. mute. You can yeah. proceed. I, I am there. Yeah. The beam strengthening. What are the systems you should use? Do you use a carbon plate or a carbon fiber wraps or a glass fiber wraps? Which is the best system? Which is an acceptable method? Which is a not acceptable method for beam strengthening, slab strengthening, column strengthening? And even for impact, seismic as well as the serviceability part. So anyway, the, this is the system selection for the application wise for different kinds of an FRP systems. That is with the carbon or with the, with the glass fiber uh, wrapping systems. The application methodology of an FRP system is that first you need to apply a primer and then the saturant. Then you need to lay an FRP based uh, fibers into it then cover it up with uh, with an top coat so in and uh, what are the design and construction guidelines uh, aci 442r02 talks about the design as well as the material specification for an frp system that is the aci 442r02 is a guide for design and construction of exter uh, externally bonded frp system for strengthening of concrete structures and and these are the various kind of codes that are used in Canada as well as the United States. ACI 442R17 is a code even used in, in India also. Now, the standard detailing of the shear strengthening in FRP strip inclined uh, 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 increases the crack yield capacity and of something like 71 to uh, 77 percent. What you can see there is a completely wrapped system on the the uh, for the shear strengthening gives a better effectiveness and this is what is the structural detailing uh, the of and wrapping uh, intervention where you can use a strip or the laminates at certain portions and this is how it's for a shear strengthening and for the actual strengthening as well as the fluctual strengthening you can use for as the the, uh, the strips of carbon fibers or for the uh, the shear strengthening and the, for the fluctual strengthening, you can use a carbon laminates. For the actual strengthening, you can use a carbon fibers also. 
what are the design factor areas the qualified the substrate concrete should be of 20 newtons per millimeter square the compressive strength bond strength has to be checked and the steel and the failure within the host concrete and steel needs to be known we need to have all the detailed held details about the construction what are the concrete what is the strength what is the deficiency what is the steel being used and and or, or the model loss and everything this is the how the surface preparation takes place for the frp system and you need to grind the surface and the round up at the, all the edges and you need to cut the membrane for the different sizes and then if there is a surface is uneven you you need to make it even using an epoxy based putty you can see an epoxy based putty then you need to apply an epoxy based uh, uh, saturant there and then once the saturant is laid then you need to wrap this uh, uh, the frp based system on the uh, the wet saturant this is called as wet wrap on the surface and then squeeze the saturant by the roller so that when the saturant comes out of that the the fibers it would give a better bonding and this is what the 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 you should see that there is no wrinkle L, uh, to be seen in the frp to achieve the tight in, uh, tight installation and once the completed uh, the, uh, the epoxy of uh, the application is completed then you can use use a top coat of a saturant epoxy then this is the fabric system a wet layup in a, in a wet layup system what you do using an equipment first you need first you uh, using an wet layup system and um, saturating machine is used to pre-wet the fabric prior to the placement in a dry layer, uh, layer system you apply the uh, saturant on the concrete substrate then you wrap the the frp based systems once the wrapping is done once the wrapping is done and then you need to uh, apply a protective uh, coating so that the frp is not exposed to uv and the top uh, top coat must be applied to protect the system and it may also be required for indoor as far as the aesthetic purpose so this is how you can retrofitting of a column takes place in a weekend you can do the uh, the the repair intervention and in the monday morning you can see here uh, see your office without any uh, any kind of and repair intervention to be seen and this is the, uh, the laminate applications and once the laminate application is done then you can even lay the uh, the laminates using an uh, using an adhesive and what we can conclude the composite system can be used for structural and structural strengthening it requires proper design and selection of material composites can be used for static as well as the seismic loading of strengthening durability condition pre testing is a method to recover deflection and increase load bearing capability protecting the further corrosion and it is easy to apply where and all this uh, the the moik armament repair and retrofitting and prot protective coating solutions been done in the market segment includes ports shipping transportation chemical and fertilizers oil and gas power chimneys manufacturing uh, hydraulic structures water and effluent treat uh, uh, treatment plants and building enhancement of stiffness of beam and slab to resist the defle deflection due to the enhanced loading you need to use an uh, an frp based system these are the various kind of a fiber fiber laminates what we have we have with the different kinds of thickness and uh, we have laminates of different uh, sizes 50 mm by 1.4 and 100 mm by 1.4 systems and this is what is the complete details and this is an anti carb system that um, what is this anti carb it is a protective coating it stop the ingress of gases and water and uh, and uh, uv and weather resistance is breathable it is decorative and it is sustainable so this is where where, where the the structure which has got uh, which is near the uh, the uh, near the sea or at the different structures you can use this kind of an anti carbonation coating that prevents ends uh, from the any ingress of gas as well as the water so this is what happens this is a uh, this uh, uh, the flow arm anti carb complies to EN 1504 for and carbon dioxide penetrability when it is tested with EN 1062 method A. And you can even spray this uh, the, the protective coating 
using and uh, you, uh, uh, as well as you can apply it through the ro roller application this is how it looks when it is directly applied and this is what is it also a uh, flow arm anti car conforms to irc sp80 standards for the code for the repair and the protective coating for concrete bridges where correction protection you can use for the various kind of structures the chimneys is and at the different kind of and and the buildings um, uh, and even for the bridges bridge application and what is the future maintenance you should have uh, to before it run to the failure you need to do a pre future maintenance and condition based maintenance very is very important detailed records monitoring inspection instruction responsibilities and road, local requirement is very important to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of and building and to reduce the consequence of uh, uh, of the failure so these are the major success stories of an, uh, the mik armament where the tista jam sikin itc my homes hyderabad where we have done the various kind of an an frp based systems and i thank you for your patience hearing thanks mr gaurav uh, it was a elaborate and detailed presentation uh, let's take uh, some audience uh, audience questions were there i will read the mm. questions uh, any material available accepted in indian code for structure repairs any material see there is uh, uh, the materials uh, uh, is not available as per the india uh, the uh, indian code the all of the materials are classified as i have already informed you icri has classified the systems as per en standard that is en1504 or uh, kind of a standards we have all some of the products that would conform to that standard even in in indian standard there is no code for the repair materials okay okay, okay.